let's find ways to prevent unwanted pregnancy. That should be the starting point. And then if it does happen, let's look at ways to make the adoption process easier on the adoptees, the adopters. Let's make it easier on everybody. I, I'm for laws that reform that and make it easier and less expensive for that to take place and for giving the mother more options. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Uh, another argument that you will hear very, very often is this is about controlling women's bodies. You hear the modified version of this, my body, my choice. So here's the thing. Bodily autonomy is very important. It's a libertarian value. It's an American value. You ought to be able to do with your body what you wish. However, I know that you've heard this argument before. When it comes to the woman, the baby is not her body. That is a separate body. It has its own DNA. It has its own heart. It has its own lungs. If it's a boy baby, it, it has a little penis. It has boy parts. It, it has Y chromosomes. That DNA is not the mother's DNA any more than my DNA is not my mother's DNA. And that is true whether I'm in the womb or outside the womb. That doesn't change. Now, the level of development certainly changes, but the level of development changes your entire life. Are you less human because you're five years old as opposed to 20 years old? Are you less human because you have a disease like Down syndrome that causes you to never really develop? Are people that are dwarfs or, or suffer from dwarfism? Uh, that, that have that issue, that have that medical condition, they don't develop past a certain point. So does that mean that they're not people anymore? Like that argument doesn't hold water. And so when you're talking about it, there's no real, like I said, there's no consistent medical definition to say that the baby is the mother's body. It, it simply doesn't exist. In fact, it, during fetal development, there actually has to be a barrier created between the mother and the child to keep the blood from mixing if they have different blood types. And so that's something that, you know, can actually take place is that the, the blood will transfer things like nutrients, but they don't transfer blood cells between one another because that's a different body. You can't have one person's blood in, in with the other. You know, the mom and the baby can have completely different blood types. It's another indication. And so, uh, you know, does the mom have four eyes? Does she have 20 fingers? Like, I could go all day with these things, but... Um, the, this is actually a pretty easy one to counter because as much as I do care about bodily autonomy, I care about the bodily autonomy of the mother, but I also care about the bodily autonomy of the child. And the problem with this argument is you're saying bodily autonomy is the justification for taking another body's autonomy. You know, I can't say that because I have bodily autonomy, I ought to be able to fling my fist in the air and punch you in the face. Well, no, because I am exercising bodily autonomy by doing that. But what I've then done is compromised your bodily autonomy in doing so. And so in the same way, you don't get to take out the life of another human being just because you want your bodily autonomy. And so that's a, a big issue for that one as well. Um, I'm fine with women making their own medical choices as long as it does not bring harm to another. I think that's a very consistent standard to have. And finally, I think that if you are having this discussion, again, this is a way to build a bridge. I really think the starting point ought to be, let's do everything we can to stop unwanted pregnancies. And yes, that means contraceptive, that means abstinence, and if somehow a, 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 a pregnancy does happen, I think the answer to that is, let's look at some other options like adoption. You know, that, that's something that there are just not enough children to meet demand when it comes to adoption. I have some of my best friends right now that have been waiting for two years to adopt. I had people at my church that were looking to adopt, and uh, one of the couples, for example, they waited like three years and had two babies that they had to send back because the mother decided within a week that actually she did want her children, which, I mean, it's good that they're going to be raised by their biological mother. It's their prerogative, but that's kind of indicative of the fact that it's really hard to adopt, and there's not nearly enough babies, and, and if there were more babies, then there would be more people that have those babies and to give them loving homes. It's it's the, the myth that if these babies are born, then they're going to be subject to a life of extreme poverty and hardship is simply not true. It may be true in some cases, but it's certainly not true in all, especially if the baby is given up for adoption. Uh, so let's find ways to prevent unwanted pregnancy. That should be the starting point. And then if it does happen, 
let's look at ways to make the adoption process easier on the adoptees, the adopters. Let's make it easier on everybody. I, I'm for laws that reform that and make it easier and less expensive for that to take place and for giving the mother more options. Uh, a mother that is on regular birth control is much better off than one that has to go through an abortion both for the mother's sake and for the child's sake. And on top of that, I really don't understand why birth control continues to be a prescription drug. I mean, I get that it's a powerful drug. I get that you need to not misuse it, but you can misuse a drug even if it is prescription. I don't understand why contraceptives aren't over-the-counter things. I really don't. Um, I, just one suggestion for me. But if you bring that up to someone in that conversation, it may be a way for them to think, okay, this person actually does care about women and, and trying to help them out there. And that's a good thing. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances. <laughs>